the monthly app of the month video that I've been making for the last couple of months have pr has proven to be very popular. So I'm going to be doing it again this month for the month of July. This month I have five more apps to share with you that are awesome and you should definitely check out. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first app on the list is called Rambox and this one comes to us from Pablo Majestic who recommended this app to me in the comments of last month's video. If you'd like to have an app appear on this list, make sure you go ahead and leave that in the comments below and I'll be sure to check it out. So Rambox is actually a multi-platform messaging app that is actually really quite cool. Now there are a few of these out there and they're all basically the same, but Rambox is neat because it has just a ton of applications that you can tie into it. So for example, Android Messages is here, Facebook Messenger, Discord, Google Voice, Google Chat, Hangouts, Instagram Direct, Mastodon, Twitter, and then just a ton of other ones that you've probably never heard of before. So like example, Glowing Bear. What the hell is Glowing Bear? Never heard of it, but it's here. So if you have a messaging application that you'd like to use, or you have, let's say you have a ton of them that you'd like to use, and you don't want to have to have all their applications open at the same time, an app like Rambox can actually really be helpful because you can just sign into them all in this one application and then switch between them as you wish. They just show up as tabs in Rambox here and it will send you notifications when you get a message and all that stuff. It's really good. Now, I will note that this is a Electron app as far as I can tell. And also, the AUR version would not install. So if you are on Arch and want to install this from the AUR, maybe you'll have better luck than I did. I couldn't get it installed. I ended up having to install the snap, pa the snap package of this. And everybody knows how I feel about snaps, but that's just the way it had to work. It did install just fine as a snap, so that's what this is. And that's Rambox. Again, all the links for these will be in the video description below, so if you want to try these out, just go ahead and head down there and click the link. While you're there, make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button so you don't miss out on next month's list and along with all the other awesome to mediocre videos that I tend to make every week. The next app on the list is called Photox, F-O-T-O-X-X. -X. And this is a photo editing application that is very powerful and I don't know how to use it. So I'm just going to put that out there. Uh, I, I've taken a, a look at this for a little while and I've realized that I can't edit photos worth a damn. So if you're a photo editor, this is probably an app that you'll want to check out. If you're like me, you'll just stare at this and think what the hell's going on. I have no clue. Uh, but it is really cool. It allows you to go through and just do a ton of stuff in terms of photo editing and stuff that you can't really do in like the very minimal photo editing apps that you find on Linux. Like if you use something like uh, Fa or SXIV, you can't really edit in those. Uh, this is a, actually a photo editing app. It also allows you to manage your photo collection so that you can be a little bit more organized. Since it focuses on managing large collection of photos, it has several batch functions to rename, resize, copy, move, convert, image format, and meta and and edit metadata. So that means that it will allow you to go through and actually sort your pictures based on any of these things that you have saved for your pictures and that will allow you to be a little bit more organized. Personally, I'm not going to let it run havoc in my image collection just because I'm already really organized and most of the stuff that I have, at least on my main hard drive, are images that I've downloaded uh, from the internet or I've taken a screenshot so those are I don't really need to do any editing or you know management on those things but for someone who has just a gigantic photo library on like an external hard drive or something like that I can see where this could be very powerful to go through and try to manage and organize your photos in terms of design I'm not all that impressed with the design this is what the design looks like it's uh okay but really it's the functionality that you're after. The third app on the list for this month is called ASCII Image Converter. Now this is a terminal based application that will do as it says. It will convert an image to an ASCII art. So I'm going to go ahead and try this for the first time live on camera and we'll see if it actually works. So first I need to go through and actually find a image, which I will do. A few moments later. Okay, so I have an image now. I've gone through and actually found that. So what 
how you use this is you do ASCII image converter and then you need to do the path to the image that you want to convert. So in my case, mine is in media, pictures, and then it's 1200 pixels, and it's, the, it's this Tux SVG thing. So I'm going to hit this, and I should be able to see the good old Tux icon in an ASCII art. And we do. It's not perfect, as I can see from right here. But if you look at this, you can kind of see that it's Tux. So actually, let me go through and try to find another one here, just to see how it works. So obviously, ASCII arts of distro logos is actually fairly easy because we see those things in like NeoFetch and all the fetch programs out there. So that's obviously fairly easy to do. So what I'm going to do is try this again. Lost my was there for what I'm going to do is try to try this again with a different logo of one that I know actually would look fairly good if it does it right. So what I'm going to do is go to miscellaneous images and then logos and then um, let's see here pop underscore OS. Well, it's 1200 pixels pop. There we go. So this should be the pop OS logo and it does. Now it's interesting that it doesn't have the ability to do sizes. I mean I'm, and I wonder if it actually doesn't. So if we do ASCII help see if there's help so we can actually see what so you can you can actually flip it horizontally flip it vertically it will allow you to do different formats display ASCII art in the negative color so that means you could swap the colors which would be cool you can save as an image string you can do colors and that's it oh and you can yep set width and height okay so there's actually quite a bit here you can do if you wanted to control the exact dimensions of it so that is ASCII image converter the next app on the list is called Blanket. Blanket is an application that allows you to play a whole ton of different relaxing sounds in the background for you to relax to or work to. So this is not something that I'd really use on my computer. If I was going to do this, I would use it on my phone through like a Bluetooth speaker or something like that. But that doesn't mean that it couldn't be useful on a computer if you're going to use it while you're like working or something. So let's go ahead and take a look at Blanket. So if we Oops, this is the wrong one. So this is what Blanket looks like. And basically what this does, like I said, is it allows you to play nature sounds, travel sounds, uh, interior sounds, white noise, and pink noise. Whatever pink noise is, I'm not... I think pink noise is when it plays sounds that from every range that the human ear can hear, maybe? I don't know. Um, but let's go ahead and play one of these. I don't know whether or not I'll actually be able to hear it without headphones on. Let me turn this put these on and we'll turn on storm so that's what storm sounds like so let's go ahead so I can actually you can act, actually go through and mix and match these so if you wanted to rain really loud that's really cool right um, why not some waves too? And a stream. <laughs> and some birds, because, you know, why not? And then a summer night. So that's a lot of, like, a cacophony of sound. Um, I can, and you can actually press pause so they can, you know, stop playing. Thank goodness. Uh, I can turn and take these off now. <laughs> but if you can get the right mixture of those, that I can see how that could be very relaxing. Uh, and obviously, there's, like I said, there's travel sounds and interior sounds as well. And this is very good if you're interested in this type of thing. Personally, I'm not sure that I would use it on my computer. Like I said, this seems like something more that I'd use on my phone. But again, it's nice to know that there's something like this on Linux that you can use. The last app on the list for this month is called Sleek. Now, Sleek is a to-do application that basically allows you to create to-dos in TXT files. So you can actually, let's say you've been managing your to-do list in a TXT file or uh, some other program that manages to-do lists in TXT files. You can actually import them right here into 
sleek and then it will just maintain that as a to do.txt file so i'm just going to go ahead and create one here and we'll just call it to do.txt and i'm going to save this to my desktop why not because that's what you do you save things to your desktop and then we'll, now what we'll do is we'll add a to do here and make video and then i can add a due date so for tomorrow and it will actually allow me to do some recurring dates which is cool so every day I want to do that and then we can hit save so what I'm not actually sure what this is here it allows you me to sign a letter maybe these are groups or something like that I'm not ex exactly sure you can use the syntax so you can do so you could go through and say put all this right in the text so we could do do I think so 2021-0709, I think maybe, and recurring uh, daily maybe, I don't know. We'll see if that works. Yeah, it actually did work. That's really cool. And and then you can just mark it off when it's done. And we'll do the next one, which would should be, uh, it actually doesn't show you the date, but that's actually really cool. Um, now that I've seen this, I really kind of like the idea of it because I've been trying to find a open source version that kind of does the same thing that Todoist does. Uh, and this kind of does that. It's not as fancy as Todoist because Todoist you can say, do this on Tuesday and it will schedule it for Tuesday. This is kind of the same, only you have to put that, you know, that due date in there by yourself. So uh, this is definitely something I would play around with. Uh, I wonder if it has a dark mode. I'm just curious. Interestingly enough, it won't let me get into the settings. Or plus, plus, press the add key again. Uh, I'm guessing that this is my computer once again making things freeze. I don't know why it's been doing that. It did this earlier to me on Discord. It just randomly froze for no apparent reason. So, anyways, that I'm assuming that this is not the app. This is just my computer being dumb again. So, yes. So. Those are our five apps of the month. Again, all the links for these will be in the video description. If you have an app that you'd like me to check out in future installments of top apps of the month, leave them in the comments below. Remember, don't use any links in your comments because those will get automatically deleted. I have nothing to do with that. That's YouTube doing YouTube. So if you have a name or an app, just leave the name and the developer if you know it. Usually just the name is fine, and I'll give it a look. Thank you for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast or press the join button down there on YouTube. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Sven, East Coast Web, Chris, Mitchell, American Camp. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.